Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Kingdom Hearts Reach Into Memories. In the last episode, I completed Halloween Town, and like I said in the last episode, I'm going to go ahead and do the Olympus Coliseum in this episode. And of all the worlds that are in Reach Into Memories that were also in Kingdom Hearts 1, which is most of them, I think the Olympus Coliseum is the most similar between the two games, if that makes sense. And you'll see definitely what I mean over the course of this episode. And another thing that's kind of funny is how glitchy this level seems to be on PCSX2, and you'll definitely see what I mean there as well. Look, an announcement! It's for some sort of contest. They're calling it the Olympus Coliseum Survival Cup. Contenders have to run an obstacle course, battling each other along the way. And listen to this, the great hero Hercules will also compete for the cup. It says here he's never been beaten. Sounds like fun. Why don't we enter too? I thought you'd say that. Wherever there's a contest, you're rare to join up. You're going to compete even if we don't, right? Uh-huh. Guess we'd better tag along then. Hold it, everyone, there's more. Only contenders who finish the preliminary course may enter the main competition. It says the preliminary course is just ahead. Then what are we waiting for? Let's go! Hercules is a model of true strength and gallantry. The perfect hero? Oh, he's perfect, all right. Perfectly infuriating. And I love how that glitch right there is red just like Hades is, so I guess it kind of matches. Just thinking about that little sunspot makes me boil. Who I'd like to drag him into the underworld. Which is why you hired me. That's right, you're my man. Cloud, is it? Your job is to beat Hercules in the games, and once you've got him cornered... Finish the job. Do that for me, and... You restore my lost memories, as we agree. You have my word. And if you guys saw at the end of that cutscene, at the very end of the cutscene, for whatever reason, Cloud has these square, blocky shadows that follow him around everywhere, and it's actually not even just following him around. For some reason, it's huge, rectangle shadows off to the left and right of Cloud. I'm not sure why that is. I think it might have something to do with his cape, but still, like, I'm not a an emulator developer or whatever. Maybe rendering the shadows for his cape, which moves a lot, which is the only, really the only thing like that I can think of right off the top of my head in this game. Maybe that's hard to emulate, I'm not entirely sure. But I think it's pretty clear that this game is, well maybe not clear, but to me, it seems like this game was put together with duct tape and, you know, gum and rubber bands and stuff like that. Unlike Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2. And that, like I said, that might just be me, but since it was a port, pretty much, or a remake I guess you could say, of King, the Game Boy Advance game to the PlayStation 2, I can't really fault them too much for that. And speaking of the ports and all that, it's actually it doesn't really have anything to do with ports, but if you'll notice here, I'm fighting Power Wilds and Bouncy Wilds in the Olympus Coliseum, which is kind of funny when you think about it, because of course those enemies were part of the deep jungle in the first game, and if you're a fan of the series, you might realize or might have noticed that the deep jungle hasn't been in any games other than the first one, and I'm assuming that's some sort of copyright issue, I haven't really looked in into the matter too much, but I'm assuming that's why they moved the Bouncy Wilds into the Olympus Coliseum rather than just not having them at all, because they couldn't make a deep jungle game. But I'm gonna go ahead and raise my HP here, because I am very, very low, in my opinion, on, on HP, and if I get into any more fights here, yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and speed these up, and I will meet you guys after I'm done.
All right, I'm pretty sure that's all of them. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's going to be any more. And I'm pretty sure, yes, indeed, this is a one. And if I think I have a one, yep, I have a one Moogle Room card here, which is fairly good, I guess, because I would hate to have to use, I think I had a seven or a nine or something like that. I would have to, or hate to have to waste that just to open a Moogle Room. Hopefully we get something good from our free pack here. Well, we got a seven. I was going to say, unfortunately, we didn't get anything good, but it looks like we did get something fairly good. And we have enough for one pack. Please be uh, like a nine or an eight. Well, we actually got nothing there that I really want. I think I'm going to go ahead and sell some of my cards because I don't need all the ones and twos and threes and fours and even fives, really. I know some people will probably say that you want to keep those just in case you need them for a slight later on because there are slights that require lower numbers, like ones and twos and stuff like that. And there's even a slight, by the way, that requires three zeros, I think. And I'm not sure how often that's going to get used, because that sounds like it would be very easy to break. But we don't really need all of these. Like, I'm not, I know slights are a big part of the game, but I think Strike Raid, for instance, is a very good slight. And I already, that requires like eights, nines, and sevens and stuff like that. So, even though there might be slights later on that might require those, I'm just going to go ahead and sell all my low cards, and I don't really care. I guess I might as well sell this potion that I'll never use. I know potions are fairly good, but whatever. Now, hopefully these are good. And I, was, I knew that was going to be a 9, by the way, because whenever it skips one, in my experience, whenever it goes from one to... and skips one, it goes to the next one. Usually that's a 9. We got an 8 here, which is pretty good. And I'm going to make a deck later on, by the way, with premium cards in it, because premium cards, I did not give enough love in the last episode. And here's three more premium cards. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and save the rest of my Moogle points for the next floor. But speaking of premium cards, I didn't give premium cards enough love in the last episode, or a couple episodes back or whatever. I said, I don't know why they put enough emphasis or put so much emphasis on premium cards. Even though I don't feel like they're that useful, I will definitely put them in to use right here in this deck that I'm about to build. And since I'm not sure exactly what I want to do yet, I'll just go ahead and speed this up or cut it out or whatever, and I will see you when I'm done. Alright guys, like I said before I cut that out, I made full use of the premium cards because I don't think I really gave them enough love in previous episodes. Premium cards, why you would want to use them, I guess, basically is that they require a smaller amount of CP to put in your deck, and the trade-off is that they don't reload when you reload your deck. So basically, they're a one-time use only card. And I'm going to go ahead and play a Calm Bounty card, speaking of cards here, and I'll explain that in just a second. But basically, you can use premium cards as the first card in your slides and not really have to worry about losing them because they would have been gone anyway. But in this chest, we get Blizzard Raid, which requires a Blizzard card and two attack cards. I've been forgetting to go to Calm Bounty Rooms in every world, and that used to be my mantra back in the day on the Game Boy Advance version of the game, because each world will give you a specific item you can only get in that world or a specific slight, and for the Olympus Coliseum, that slight or that item is Blizzard Raid, and hopefully a second Calm Bounty Room will give us another good item, but usually, in my experience, you'll get the good item on the first Calm Bounty Room you play, but hopefully there is another good item here. Well, I can't really ask for too much more than a 9 Olympia, so let me go ahead and mess around with my deck real quick, because that is a 9, and I'm sure there's going to be a place for that somewhere. Alright, I put that 9 Olympia card in my deck, but I also, to counter that, since we don't really have that many card points, I had to take a potion out, which might not sound like the perfect idea, but it kind of is, and I'll, because we're getting a high potion later on, I have an idea for how this is all going to go together, and it kind of relies on that high potion that we're going to actually be getting in this episode, I think. So, and I also, by the way, I think I need to explain that Calm Bounty thing just a tiny little bit better. But of course, we have a cutscene. Huh? Where did you come from? Don't tell me you guys finished the prelims. We sure did, and now we want to go for the cup. Well, you came to the right place. Not that you stand a chance against her. Why not? Two words. You. Eight. Heroes. You're wrong. Yeah, he said three words. Exactly, but that's not the point. How can we prove we're heroes unless you give us a chance? He's right, Phil. They cleared the prelims. I think they deserve a shot. Hmm, you got a point there, Herc, but still. Of course, we could always cancel the games. Cancel them? What for? 
Old Phil's prelim course was so hard no one else could finish it. Is that right? Well, if you'll let us compete, you won't have to cancel the games. How about it, Phil? Okay, you got me over a barrel, so fine. Here's how it works, kid. It's Sora, not Kid. Sure, sure, kid. Since your team and Hercules are the only contenders... No, they're not. The games have a new challenger. Name's Cloud. The more, the merrier. Now the games will really be something to see. I'm looking forward to this. Don't expect me to pull any punches. Hey, as long as you don't expect me to take them. Let's give it our best. Okay, let's get this show going. But first, I gotta explain a few rules. Rule number one. First one through the obstacle course wins. Rule number two. In the event of a tie, a battle will determine the winner. Rule number three. You can interfere with your opponents on the course. And finally, rule number four. All challengers have to give it everything they've got. Alright, enough with the spiel. On your marks, get set, go! And just like every other time in Reach Into Memories when we have to get from one plot point to the next plot point, we need to get from that plot room to the next plot room, and I hope this is a good card. A two kingdom key might just be worse than that one Olympia we got earlier in this episode, but we need to get to the, like I said, of course, to the next plot room. And I'm pretty sure if we just go through this door, it'll be right there. And since this is a three, I specifically remember, yeah, I was going to say, we. I think we have a three white room card. And I'm not sure if I've really explained the white mushrooms in this game. I think I might have played the white mushroom card a while back. But I didn't really explain them too well, and I don't even see any in this room. Maybe they'll spawn as we walk around, and I completely forgot. Unfortunately, I don't think getting that card is going to count, because usually, in my experience, if you don't see the thing pop up in the bottom left or whatever it is showing you what you got in the field, like whatever card comes out of the boxes or whatever card comes out of the barrels and stuff like that, if it doesn't actually show you what it was, in my experience, you don't actually get it. But that spiel aside, you can fight the barrel spiders just like in the first game, but in Reach and Memories, of course, we have been essentially trained to hit things in the environment like barrels, so it's more of a surprise. And over there, there were some white mushrooms, but in Reach and Memories, and also, I think I need to go fight those barrels. Actually, not fight, but I bet there's a spider, of course, so it did turn into fighting the barrels, even though I was going to say hit the barrels originally. But in Reach and Memories, the white mushrooms don't, as far as I remember, I'm really trying to, but I don't remember if they give you anything in particular other than the white mushroom enemy card i don't think it's like the first game where you get things like you know the arts items and mystery goos and all that kind of stuff of course this game is a little bit more simple so i wouldn't think that those would be in this game but of course i could be wrong so if they do give you something other than the oh i think actually i do remember what they do i think they might drop those r's for the or the p's for the premium cycle or premium roulette thing which is good, I guess, but I would rather just get my premium cards from an item shop or something like that. But it is a little bit easier in this game to fight the white mushrooms, I think. Because if I remember, they only require fire, ice, or fire, blizzard, and thunder. So they are a little bit easier to fight. Gorge, that was nice of him to wait for us to catch up. He's not waiting. Remember rule number three? You can interfere with your opponents on the course. He's looking to narrow the field. You can put that away. I'm not looking for a fight with you, so keep moving. See? He was waiting for us to catch up. Well, we've caught up. Let's take him up on his offer and keep going. I don't see a downside. Listen, are you sure? I'm not here for the cup. Just Hercules. Today he loses more than the competition. You don't mean, but why? This is business. Stay out of it. Go win your cup. Do you realize what you're doing? Rule number three. You can interfere with your opponents, right? You're not the only one who wants to fight Hercules. Big mistake.
And here, of course, we have Cloud Stripe, one of the hardest bosses in the game, in my opinion. Especially because you fight him in the first set of cards you get at the beginning of the game. Which is one reason I really, really suggest that you go to the Olympus Coliseum later on in the set of six that they give you. That's one of the reasons why I went to Wonderland, Monstro, Halloween Town, all those worlds before I came here. Because I knew that he was going to be a hard fight. And of course, I don't think it's really a spoiler to say that Hades is going to be a fight later on in this level. Cloud and Hades are two very difficult bosses in my opinion. So like I said, if you can, hold on and fight them later as late as you possibly can. But here he has Omni Slash and Cross Slash as two of his slights. And of course we could break those with a, a zero. But since his attacks have really, really low values, for whatever reason Omni Slash and Cross Slash have really low values. As you can see right there, it's an 11. I guess that's kind of to balance it out a little bit. But since they are such low values, we can break them with our slights, which makes that premium card slight technique even more powerful, especially this early on in the game. But speaking of power, it doesn't appear that Cloud is really as powerful as I was making him out to be, because what did I beat him in under two minutes or whatever? But take it from me, if you try and fight him too early, he will probably be very hard for you. But here we get our high potion, which, like I said earlier, I'll definitely have to put in my deck, because it'll really make that premium card technique even better. Cloud, where'd you go? He headed for the finish line. We better go after him. Right. That was a fairly lackluster cutscene. I thought there was going to be a little bit more substance to it than that, but we need to grind a little bit because I think Hades is going to be a little bit harder than Cloud was. Even though Cloud was fairly easy and I might not even have to grind for Hades at all, I'd rather be safe than sorry because I definitely have died to Hades before. And here we get our first status ailment, if you will, because right now I'm holding down on the analog stick to move forward. Basically that ailment right there, which I guess is confusion, makes you go in the opposite direction from whatever you're pushing on the control stick or the analog stick. So if you're trying to get somewhere without maybe getting into a Heartless fight or whatever, that can be fairly annoying. But I'm going to go ahead and open up a save point room here. Because I, I should have, yeah, I was going to say I should have plenty of save point cards. But I want to go ahead and save right here because like I said, Hades, in my experience, is fairly difficult. So I would like to have a save point right before it, just in case I die to Hades. And it would also make a fairly good thing because I'm going to be grinding a little bit. And if I ever get low on HP... I can just come back to the save point instead of having to go way, way back to the area between whatever the last floor we did was and the floor that we're on right now. So let me go ahead and speed all this up or cut it out or whatever I usually do, and I will meet you guys after I am done grinding. Alright, well I beat all the enemies in this room here, but I don't really feel like going back to other rooms and I didn't even level up, so I decided I'm just going to cut the grinding short. Hopefully that doesn't come back to bite me, but I'm just going to go ahead and go into this plot door because I think I'm ready. Like I said, hopefully it doesn't come back to bite me, but I don't think it should be that much of a problem to beat Hades, especially with my newfound premium card technique that I never got to use back in the day. You lost! Give it up, Cloud! We're not done yet. I can't guarantee your safety if we keep going like this. Better worry about yourself. Looks to me like you're slowing down a bit. Don't worry, I'll back you up. Sora? Get all the backup you want. I'm going to finish you and get back my memories. Your memories? Now, now, Cloud, we don't want to spill the beans. Hades, you! And I love how Hercules now has a blue one, so the glitches match the character. Looks like you oversold yourself. All you did was wear him down. This doesn't look good for your performance rating. Let me put it this way. You, my spiky-haired friend, are fired. But my memories, we had a deal. Did you really think you could get your lost memories back just like that? Get a grip. Why, you... Out of the way, I'll take care of Hercules myself. Hey! Rule number five, it's never too late to enter the games. 
Hades, you were behind this from the start. Cloud may have failed to take you out, but he did break you down. Time for plan B. Pack your pita, Hurt, cause you just won a free trip to the underworld, paid by me. Hold it! Sora, no! Come on, Herc. How can we go one-on-one -on -one if you're in the underworld? Good point, kid. I guess you'll just have to go with them. Rule number six. There are no rules. Ha <laughs> ha! Now the music in this fight, guys, is exactly, or not exactly, I guess, it fits this fight is what I'm trying to say. Unlike the fight music that we heard with the cloud fight, but really it doesn't look like he's been playing too many high cards, especially like that temper flare slight he had right there. It didn't look to be that high of a value, so I think we're going to be okay for this fight. See a 14 value for that temper flare. Before we started, I thought I was going to have a hard time, but like I said, it doesn't look to be too bad. I do remember, though, that he has a Fireaga Ball. I believe that's the name of the attack. And I almost died right there as I'm saying I don't think I'm going to die. And I'll talk about Fireaga Ball in just a second. But if you can get two or three Goofies to do a Tornado Level 2 or Level 3, those attacks, for some reason, do a lot of damage. And I don't know why I just played that Zero there, but it doesn't look like it got broken. And I'm also surprised that Hades is resistant to Thunder. That doesn't really make much sense. But the Fireaga Ball attack is kind of devastating. I remember that one having a higher value, so even though it is harder to break, it should be easier to dodge. But I remember, yeah, I have a Donald and a Goofy card, so I want to show you guys the Wild Crush technique, and I think I just broke the Fireaga Ball twice, but here's Wild Crush. I don't know if I've shown this, but it does a lot of damage, and in this case, I have really high cards played, so it's going to be hard to break. But yeah, I'm going to let him try and use a Fireball, or Fireaga Ball, because I want you guys to see what it looks like. There's one. Now look, oh, did I just break it? I didn't even mean to break it. I might even kill him before he gets the chance. I mean, if I can kill him, I'm definitely going to kill him. I'm not going to let him kill me just to let him show off. There it is. I would get hit by both of those, even though earlier I was saying just how easy that is to die. But here he is completely dead, and he was a whole lot easier than Cloud was, or just as easy as Cloud was, pretty much, even though I thought he was going to be harder. So either I'm getting better... Or getting luckier and it's probably a little bit of a mix of the two but here we get a level up and I'm probably going to indulge in a CP boost with that level up and here we get a Hades card which I'm not entirely sure what that one does but since the premium cards turned out to be a whole lot more useful than I thought they were in the past I'll probably look into using a couple of different enemy cards now that I know that there are more than just attack cards I could be using but of course another cutscene What? The games are cancelled? How come? Two words. Everyone. Is. Pooped. Wait, that was more than two. You gotta be kidding. What about my match with Hercules? I'm sorry, Sora, but you wouldn't want me to compete in this condition. Let's have a match when I've rested up a bit. Can you wait? Okay, I'll hold you to that. Then it's settled. Sora, over here! He's coming around! You okay? Yeah. Sorry I messed up your games. Hey, hope you get your memories back! Forget about what Hades said! Sometimes the tiniest thing can make you remember stuff you forgot years ago. If it's an important memory, there's no way it can be gone forever. That's what I think, anyway. That's for you, for helping me out. Sure you don't want to just come with us instead? not interested and here we get a cloud summon card and even though it's a four if you pair it with attack cards or cure or whatever and just make it part of a combo it can be very very powerful 
even though that's the case, I probably won't be using it that often. And what Cloud said, or Sora invited Cloud to come with them, it kind of makes me wonder if it would even be possible, it shouldn't be possible, for people in the Castle Oblivion floors to go out of Castle Oblivion, or out of the floor that they're on in Castle Oblivion, so it'd be kind of interesting to see what exactly would happen. But speaking of seeing what would happen, of course it wouldn't be Rechanted Memories without a cutscene between floors. Just bits and pieces. Maybe you could try telling us some more stuff about her. Who knows? It might even help you remember other things. Well, uh... She was quiet. And always drawing. When we'd go to the beach, she'd draw a picture instead of swimming. Sometimes she'd draw us, too. She was really good. I remember Riku and I fighting over who she'd draw next. But one day, she was gone, just like that. I think the grown-ups knew the reason. They might even have tried to explain some of it to me. But I was little. I probably didn't understand what was happening. I remember crying after she was gone. But that's all. I still don't remember her name. Oh, I bet you remember it in no time. Huh. I must point out, Sora keeps remembering things instead of forgetting them. It seems to me, forgetting things may be the only way to reach the memories buried deeper down inside each of us. So we should forget in order to remember? Like those guys said, our most precious memories lie so deep in our hearts that they're out of reach. All that stuff about finding, being losing, and losing being finding, I didn't get it at first, but maybe this is what they meant. Gorse, Sora. I think I'm a little jealous of you. How come me and Donald and Jiminy aren't remembering more of the stuff from our memories? Come on, Goofy. Let's get going. We gotta forget things faster. Just as we intended. We'll continue with our plan. Let's see how far this group will go. You had your fun on the first floor. So this time, it's my turn. <laughs> I'm not going to just give it to him. Don't break him. Well... Do I detect a soft spot? I'm not gonna break the toy. I'm not dumb. Don't forget. Sora is the key. We need him if we're going to take over the organization. I know that you're in on it too. But keep it under your hood. At least until the time is right. You would have been wise to have done the same, Larkseen. So, Sora, did anything back there help you remember your friend's name? Uh, her name's the only thing I can't seem to remember. You gotta try! Hurry up and remember it! <laughs>
I don't think it would be too much of a spoiler to say that we will definitely be seeing a lot of that blonde haired woman and the reason I'm not saying her name is because I don't think they said it in that cutscene so we might as well keep that little bit under wraps but I want to thank you guys for watching this episode of Let's Play Kingdom Hearts Rechain of Memories and in the next episode we can really only go to Agrabah see you guys next time.